Um, I'm sorry, Collective. I had to start the video over again because I, I ran out of food. All right, just to make a long story short, I'm going based off of um what the divine showed me, revealed to me about my cousin Ashley, who is my first cousin from uh, my mom's side. Uh, she is my mom's niece. I was very close to her. We grew up very close. I adopted her and she adopted me as we were siblings as far as, and not just blood cousins, but siblings as in sisters. We were dressed alike, our hair was done alike. We went to the same schools throughout our whole entire life. But in the process of us going to school in our whole entire life, I, again, collective, when I went back to referring to my other videos that, remember I said, reflecting on my life of me going through my school life, I, was, I wasn't really supported from my cousins. Uh, when we would meet up in the hallways, now, mind you, when I was in high school, okay, uh, we went to uh, Bartram, main building, um, my, my cousin was in her charter and I was in my charter. I was in health and humanities and she was in arts humanities, which was like downstairs, the very first floor. And I was on the third floor. My cousin would, um, I picked up the habit that my cousin would only ask me to do things that was beneficial to her personal gain. Right. But I didn't care because a lot of the things that she did, it was like, you know, I just wanted to appease my cousin. I was being passive aggressive when I shouldn't have. Anyway, it, it grew. So at this time, jumping to the future, we're adults now. We have our own children, our own responsibilities, our own families and, and things. And I've noticed that my cousin would do things out of maliciousness. Um, and, and she knew it would bother me and hurt me, but yet she would have a blank face as if she really didn't care. Um, so this one last time when I was leaving... Uh, Oklahoma back in 2015, uh, 16, in between that time, around uh, February, I had experienced one last thing concerning my cousin, and she mistreated me and my children before we left. Now, mind you, this was dead set in the middle of winter, dead set in the middle of winter. It was freezing and everything, and her house had got robbed, but she had got all this stuff together for her and her children. And she was being controlling about the heat. She was being controlling about um, how, when we were supposed to wash up, being controlling about when me and my kids was allowed to eat after her kids had seconds. And it was crazy because when we got kicked out of her older sister's house, all of us had got kicked out and we went to my other cousin's house, which is Ashley. We went to her house to stay until the ride got there. Um, she mistreated she mistreated me and now mind you my cousin left she lived with me twice because she lost her apartment due to her not being able to keep up with her bills chasing after some negro that belonged to a karmic and she wanted to continue being a side chick now mind you my cousin the divine let me know that my cousin was bashing me and talking about me behind my back to this masculine energy uh about me which was not true uh, a lot of the things that she had made up was was due to her being envious and jealous because I had cut her off. Um, when I had left, I automatically stopped talking to my cousin because she mistreated me and my kids and she did not treat us the same way that I treated her. When she had lost her apartment, um, I, I was about maybe 28 years old, 28 or 29 years old. And... She was living with me and I had let her. Now, mind you, I was living in a two bedroom apartment and I was paying my own rent. I didn't have no niggas paying my rent or or my, my parents. Now, again, like I said, I grinded and did everything by myself because I was used to doing everything by myself. Even if my back was up against the wall, it was like I, I'm not asking nobody for help because I really, really didn't have any options as far as in like the support. So the same support that I was giving my cousin when she was without, she did not give it back in return. And I had took the liberty of waiting until everybody was in the bed sleep. And I pulled out the hamper of their dirty clothes the day of that I knew that my rock was coming to get me and my kids. And I made sure to piss on every last toothbrush that was theirs and their clothes due to the fact that I was proclaiming and... I was proclaiming and, and, and projecting to her energetically without me even knowing that I took my power back and I'm done with her and I'm I'm not going to deal with her anymore. Now, by my cousin 
talking to a masculine about me and bashing me about my past, about my promiscuity and all this other stuff. Yeah, I was, I was a kid. It's nothing for me to explain about or get worked up about me being promiscuous when I was younger. Okay, I was single. All right, and when you're single, you can fucking suck whoever you want, right? But here's the thing. My cousin wasn't thinking about how she was reflecting about herself when she was doing this about me. Because what I know about my cousin, I've seen myself and I've known because she ran her mouth with me. She played this thing of always wanting to emotionally manipulate and play the victim all the time of, you know, woe is me. I got bad self-esteem, but then when I can get something out of you, then I'm, I'm back up to just pushing you down and making you feel like shit because I took your energy from you. So, Collective, here's what we're going to tell you about Ashley Borens. Okay, since she wants to bash me and talk about me to men underneath my voluptuous and, and my clothes and stuff like this. Let's, let's talk to everybody about how you are. Her children, she has three children. She has a son named Dason James. She has a daughter named uh, John A. Uh, Borens. And she has another daughter named uh, Kaden. All right. She went as far as naming her, her last child uh, after my son. And she has a daughter, so she named her Kaden. And, and my son's name is Aiden. Okay, now this will let me know that the divine know let me know that my cousin was mocking me from day one. She was she was really fixed on just trying to mock everything about me. My cousin was so eager to have somebody look at me as if I was this foul individual, promiscuous, slutty. I neglect my kids. I don't pay attention to nothing. I'm chasing after niggas and running game. This what she do. This what she did do. Her oldest son, yeah, and her middle child, their cousins and siblings, yeah. Nose is itching. I'm hitting it right on the head, okay? Her oldest son, father, is cousins with her daughter's father. First cousins, yeah. And her third child is from a masculine karmic that was sleeping with somebody else that had been burnt and she's been burnt twice dealing with him. She's been also pregnant by him twice. She lost one. She got an abortion and she kept one. Yeah. Chasing after this one particular nigga. Okay. Named Carl Massey. Yeah. When I was living in Southwest Philadelphia, she again didn't have nowhere to go and we let her live. I let her live with me and my children. She brought this fool over to my house and thinking that I wasn't going, I had applied to her. I told her, don't break the rules in my home. I don't believe in bringing niggas in and out of my crib, especially after a certain uh, amount of time. And it's all these kids that's in the motherfucking house. That's not what we going to do. This ain't that. She tried to sneak him in my house and it just so happened that at that time I wasn't awakened, but I had that gut feeling that somebody was in my house that wasn't supposed to be here. So I left out the bedroom and I went downstairs, you know, playing it cool, going to the kitchen to grab me a cup of water, ice, however you do it. And I hear a voice. It's a male voice. So I go walk out on the porch. I said, what's up? Why is the lights on? I approached my cousin next time. What's, what's all the lights being on down? Oh, uh, well, um, the kids is asleep and I'm out here. I'm out here with Carl. I said, what, I mean, well, what's, what is he getting ready to do? Because I'm getting ready to lock up. I don't play with uh, leaving my house open and available for me to anybody to be raped or pillaged and, and whatnot. So my cousin, she's acting all nonchalant as if I'm over acting and I, I address him. I tell him I overlook, overstep my cousin because I know she's trying to be manipulative, playing stupid, but I didn't got hip to her game a long time ago. So it don't work for me. It was dumb. But anyway, she called herself trying to make me look and seem like I'm a bad person, but in all, all you do is sleep with other people's men. 
and you sleep with family members. You even opened up and told me about our cousin Corey, who was married in the family, who tried to come at you. He came at the house and sat with you, and he was trying to drink with you, and was acting as if he wanted to fuck you, and you turned him down. But then you, then you opened up your fucking legs to his brother Brian, and this nigga was married, and you, and he was getting money out of you. You can't see that what you tried to predict on me is coming right back to you tenfold. You want me to be used and mistreated and looked at as a cum bucket and all you are is a cum bucket. You're a karmic. That's all you're looked at as. Fast, easy ass. That has low self-esteem who would buy dick for attention and you have an eating disorder. You purge and, and engorge, over engorge, emotionally eating, making yourself fat. And you tell yourself that you ugly and all of this. And then you're going to turn around and try to project that off on me. Knowing that everything that was going on in the family, you said nothing about because you was in on it the whole entire time. You call yourself trying to bash me to make me seem like I'm an illegitimate mother and all I do is go around and sucking dick and fucking people and I don't pay attention to my responsibility when it was always you. You was always up in somebody's husband's face. You was always putting somebody's dick in your coochie and mouth. You was always the one catching STDs due to the fact that you chasing dick that don't belong to you. And willing to do everything and break bank just to satisfy this nigga just so you can say you got somebody. I I that's not me. I'm not built like that. You even tried to come at my kid's father when we were only freshly married for a good three to five years. You had him taking care of you and your son playing a pity party. But see, you forgot. The same person that, that you bashed and you was talking about and you was trying to trying to make it seem like I'm just this, oh my God, I'm just this, this slut. Like, I'm this bad person. But you was upstairs when we were in middle school, you was upstairs with somebody else's man fucking him while I was downstairs with my nigga. Big difference. The person that I was fucking in the living room was my boyfriend. And you were fucking someone else's man. And you ended up getting an STD. I mean, I did too. But guess what? I didn't get pregnant. I didn't get, I didn't sleep with his brother or his cousin or his first cousin. Y'all collective, my cousin literally goes down the line. She literally goes down the line. She is very much guilty of fucking her own family members. She fucked her brother. She fucked her other brother. She fucked her cousin. She fucked uh, uh, somebody else's man. She fucked uh, uh, in-laws. And then she was flirting with others. Who knows what else my cousin has done? All I know is that everything that she was saying about me, she, didn't, she wasn't even paying attention to the fact that I knew shit about her. I didn't even have to use my third eye. You you forgot that we were supposed to be road dogs forever. But see, the difference in between me and you is that I can out myself and stand on my stand on my shit. That was of my past. That was when I was a kid. You doing this shit when you grown, boo boo. When we was in Oklahoma, you touched down. The first thing you did was call up a nigga and try to get him to fuck you. Okay, some some boy named uh, Salofa who was married, who was in a relationship with an Asian girl and had a baby. You was playing house with him, had him come into your crib, fucking you and you walking around when we was living with your older sister, Shannon. Yeah, you walking around and you come in my room with no panties on whatsoever and you got him in my room and you you spreading around. Your, your stinky coochie smell all over my bed because you trying to seduce this man. 
when you already was sleeping with somebody else's man. You was already promiscuous. You was already rocking a badge of being a karmic, a cum bucket, a deuce deuce. Always, always open to be the side chick, okay? You can't see past what I'm giving you. No, I don't want I don't want you to be open to, to building a relationship with me. I just want you to fuck me and give me what I can get. And I'll settle for food. I'll settle for food. Yeah, anything to satisfy me because I have low self-esteem. And I like lying on my cousin to have people thinking that she's like me when it was actually her. Like, really? And then for another one that I had gotten that the Lord told me to reveal, reveal about her brother, Kai Borens, that was locked up for a long ass time for false accusation of him raping somebody, his wife. But in all reality, you still raped and you still went to jail for rape because I also was revealed that you raped my my best friend, my second best friend, and you and you ruined a perfectly good relationship, friendship that I had because you had that girl thinking that I set her up and you, Kai Borns, my other cousin, Corey Hill, and my other cousin, Jerry Hill, sat up and raped her and my mom heard it and she knew about it and my dad knew about it and they didn't care. And you had that girl thinking that I knew about what was going on when I just walked up to the house from me leaving Hadia's crib, waiting on Tiffany Brown to come to my house. And all three of y'all took her in the back of the house where all the garbage was at and laid that girl down on top of that trash. And y'all was y'all teamed up and trained on her. And made her leave crying. And I'm trying to get this girl's attention and ask her what's going on. Tiffany, why are you not talking to me? Why are you running away? Y'all fucking raped her. So if you did go to, go to prison for rape, you still got that conviction. You did rape somebody. And Jerry, you did deserve to get shot up. Because you contribute to raping her too. And Corey, the situation of what you went through with your crazy bipolar ass ex-wife and her cheating on you and burning you and making you go crazy and putting shit in, in your food, trying to kill you and trying to stab you up and, and do shit to you. You deserved everything that happened to you because y'all took somebody's innocence and then y'all pushed it off on me and made it seem like I did not care or I knew about this girl's innocence being taken away from her. Y'all deserve everything that happened to y'all because you worked it on yourself. Instead of choosing to heal and do what's right, y'all chose a bag. Y'all chose money, self-satisfaction, hurting me just because. And y'all not even paying attention to that. Y'all are judging yourself through every action that y'all have done to me. And I forgive every last one of y'all because I released you with love. I can love y'all from a, dis dif a distance and never feel different about what you did to me, but still not hold grief and vengeance and, and anger in my heart towards you because I know what you receive in is karmic justice. You deserve everything that happened to you and beyond because you worked that on yourself. And Tiffany Brown, sweetheart, with that day that I saw you in Dollar Tree, I had no idea about what my cousins did to you. I did not set you up and I would never have done that to anybody, not even my enemy, baby. I was raped for three years by my uncle. My own uncle, my mom's brother, one of her brothers, Raymond. I would not wish that on nobody. And if I would have known that that happened to you, I would have immediately called the police. I didn't care about them being my family. That was wrong. And I knew how that felt. And I know if anybody's innocence is taken away from, especially if it's a family member, 
You're supposed to stand up for that individual. Stop that from happening to somebody else's child or friend. Tiffany, I still love you. I still care about you. You ain't got to speak to me. You ain't got to acknowledge me. I'm just letting you know. I didn't know and I truly care about you. And I'm praying for you and I hope that you heal from it. But if you ever want to reach out to me and you want to talk and I'm open for it. If not, I'm still okay with just letting it go. But just to let you know, I was not a part of that. And I truly did care about you and I valued our friendship. But going back to my family members, I noticed that the divine showed me how my family really was towards me. And instead of me looking at my family in a very bitter grotesque dark and just oh i'm gonna hurt you yeah i felt that emotion i went through that that was part of my healing but when i recognized god gave me the clarity on why i went through and why things were falling why things were e erupting why people were acting they all played their part they did their job god presents everybody with free will to choose to go left or right never straddle the fence because if you lukewarm, he'll spew you out. It's either you're hot or you're cold. You know who I chose? I chose the right side, the white side. My family chose the left side, okay? That was their free will. So having any compassion for them about what they've done, no, I don't have compassion for them. I don't have resentment or bitterness either. It's what, look, it is what it is. I accepted it. But see, Collective, I had said before in previous videos that my cousins had pushed me away for so long that I got immune to it to where it, it would be redundant for me to even care about what would remotely happen to them. There's no there's no connection there. But I'm just calling out what was done to me. You know, that wasn't right. That wasn't equal give and take that they left me out in the cold my whole entire life. You know, and I've already went through that healing process. I accepted it then before I even had my awakening. But during my awakening, I got the true clarity from the divine about what spirit was being used, why they did it, what place they played, what option they choose. And understand the, the underlying motive of the mental capacity of my family. They all suffer with a mental illness due to trauma of choosing not to heal properly from being molested, raped, physically abused, abandoned, codependency, jealousy, envy, one up and by any means necessary. Just just creating conflict and confusion because that's all they knew. They were comfortable in it and they didn't want to change. But see. The divine tells all of us, you have free will. My will was, was to do right. My will was to continue to walk upright. My will was to continue to suffer to do right. And if you suffer long and hard, you will be blessed. And it doesn't necessarily have to be just in the material, the 3D. It also means spiritually. And I thank God every day for him Moving me through, teaching me how to sidestep, teaching me to heal, to keep healing and choosing to love myself and focus on myself because nobody else is going to love me the way he do. And I believe it. And I'm going to keep believing it. And I'm going to keep walking in it. Because what's meant for me is meant for me. And I don't have to explain how the Lord deals with me. Especially if you never cared and you never believed in me in the first place. So why why X? That's blowing smoke up my ass. And I most certainly don't want to waste your time because you wasted more than enough of mine. But again, collective, um, I want everybody, I'm encouraging you to heal properly. I'm encouraging you not to hold resentment in your heart. I'm encouraging you to accept who you truly are. I'm encouraging you to let the divine lead you. I'm encouraging you to be submissive to his name. I'm encouraging you to call out his name. I'm encouraging you. I'm feeling his spirit. I feel emotional right now. I'm encouraging you to open up.
I'm encouraging you to let him in your life. Let, let him lead you. Submit yourself fully and let him move through you and you will feel the natural highness of how he can have you sidestep the enemy and move and keep you 10 steps ahead and heal you through the process. And you will not be alone. You will feel his immaculate, marvelous presence within you to where if the enemy try to overthrow you, yes, it will throw you off at some point, but then God will never let you stay down. It's to teach you, to build you, to make you, to move you, to push you, to stand. Because you are having a spiritual awakening. You are being elevated. You are being accepted of who you are supposed to be. And he needs you to hurt, to build you so that you can be spiritually built and strong. So when you leave this earth, you are magnificently made in mold to be who you are meant to be. As above, so below. And be that help, that continuous help, that angel that you are meant to be. That you are supposed to stand and fight and rock that badge of honor. And you be that soldier that God intended you for, for you to be. And never be ashamed of who you are. You let love and you lead with love. And you will also receive it in all multitudes. I reveal myself, my true authentic self. I am who I am. I love me and I will always love me. But my God teaches me to forgive, to lead with my heart. And lean not on my own understanding and understand the wisdom that is given to me. No man can take from me. Nor my abundance collective. I love you. I care about you. I mean you nothing but the wellness of your mind, body, soul, and spirit to keep pushing through, keep having perseverance, keep striving, and I'll be there with you side by side. I can lead you to it, but I can't make you drink. Be wise. Lean not on your own understanding and rock out.